What's happening, chaps? Welcome back to the number one. Living in Tacoma Channel up here in the beautiful Washington State. This is Phil Walsh, your licensed real estate broker with Skyline Properties Inc. and Homeowner Solutions. Number one, thanks for watching these videos. We really do appreciate it. Number two, you want to get in touch? Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Let's do a FaceTime or video call so I can get to know your needs and wants and we can figure stuff out before you guys relocate and move up here to the beautiful Northwest. So this video, is reasons why locals say maybe you shouldn't move to Washington State. So no BS, no bollocks, let's just dive straight into it, okay? So obviously uh, Seattle, uh, Olympia is our capital up here in Washington. Uh, we're up here in the beautiful Northwest. Uh, most surveys, and actually some of the surveys that are out there, say that Washington State is one of the best places to live in in the United States, and we're actually, like I said, ranked number one in a lot of these surveys, believe it or not. Now, obviously, as a real estate broker, I'm wanting you guys to relocate and move up here, and that's why I do these videos, that's why we started this channel, so I can dial in your needs and wants and we can get that home sorted out for you, okay? So I didn't make this video to say, don't move to Washington State. What would be the point in that? I'd be out of a job and I wouldn't be making these videos, right? But I wanted to just take a look at some of the pros and some of the cons and the good and the bad and some reasons why some people say maybe you shouldn't move to Washington State. I like to give you as much information as possible so you can be informed and make those educated decisions on one of the biggest moves that you're going to be making, especially in purchasing a house and relo relocating sorry, across, across to Washington State. So there's pros and cons, goods and bads, and there's horses for courses, and everybody's gonna be different, okay? So this is just a little caveat, little video. This is just to give you a general idea of what some people say. So number one is the higher cost of living up here in Washington State, okay? So we're higher than the national average. So as of last year, June, July, just the summer of 2022, let's call it, um, it was 123.1. Now, what does that mean? Say, for example, you live in Texas or you're down in Florida and you want to go and buy a GoPro, right? That GoPro, say it costs you a hundred bucks, not that it does, <laughs> trust me on that one, costs you a hundred dollars down in Florida or, or another state where you might live. The equivalent of that same thing up here in Washington state, will cost you $123.10. So basically an extra 23 bucks, right? And that's just the average about the higher cost of living that we do have up here, okay? Um, although there's no state income tax, we do have a high sales tax up here. Um, and that's at 6.5%. And then local sales tax rate, which is sometimes as high as 10.1% in some of the states, okay? So the higher cost of living, horses for courses, depending on your job, etc., etc. Now, number two, let's talk about traffic or not. So the traffic absolutely sucks. It kind of sucks everywhere you live and sometimes you just got to deal with it, right? You just got to pop in the uh, the buds, play some music and just go with the flow. Or not such a flow because the traffic sucks. So I've mentioned in other videos, I-5, which is the main hub, Seattle all the way down past um, Tacoma, Puyallup, JBLM, Joint Base, Lewis McCord. They've been working on that since 20, 2001. Remember the time when Blockbuster was still here? You go rent a video on your Saturday night and that was your family night in? Like 2001, good Lord. Um, Seattle is absolutely atrocious. Puyallup, a little bit better. Tacoma, not so much. Um, Olympia's not too bad, actually. And then moving further on down south, um, Chehalis, Centralia, not too bad. But say, for example, the average commute time in the United States is, say, 17.2 minutes. Okay, that's the average, right? Seattle, it is 26.4 minutes. So basically an extra 10 minutes to get from A to B as opposed to anywhere else or the average across the, the rest of the country, okay? So traffic sucks. Um, some Americans and some folks aren't used to roundabouts. Um, we grew up with roundabouts in the UK, so it's, I mean, it's water off a duck's back for somebody like myself, but you have a lot of roundabouts and they're coming quite more frequent up here now. But in Olympia, there's a, quite a few roundabouts. And believe it or not, 
the Department of Transport actually put out a video on YouTube about how to tackle roundabouts, which for us sounds kind of hilarious, but I kind of get to see the point of view, right? Which lane should you be in if you turn and left, if you're going straight over, etc., etc. But that's what a Washington, um, the road department put out. There's a video on YouTube about how to navigate <laughs> roundabouts, which we kind of found a little bit funny. So number three, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the weather. Now listen, you've seen our videos and sometimes I start off with the fact that you wouldn't believe that we're not in the Caribbean, check out this weather, check out the sun. So this morning it was a little bit gloomy, a little bit overcast, hence the reason for a light summer jacket. But the weather up here in Washington State, I think, is an absolutely added bonus, okay? Um, it doesn't rain all the time and these numbers can be taken maybe sort of a bit tongue-in-cheek. So Miami and Houston, for example, have a higher rainfall than we do in Seattle or Olympia or Puyallup. But, and here's the reason why, you get what's called up here is maybe the gloominess, okay? So we don't get the, you know, a lot of thunderstorms. We obviously don't get any hurricanes, um, touch wood, that come through and obviously put a massive del deluge um, down on us. But we do get what I would call is drizzle quite a few of the days excuse me and other days obviously if we get the clouds coming in it tends a little to be a bit gloomy so that would seem to think that it does rain all the time up here but it doesn't we have four seasons up here in washington state which i think is really really awesome it's it's great summer months are absolutely brilliant august um it gets to about 90 degrees in august but average temps are about that 70 degrees winter time your average temps are you know, 35 degrees, um, can get a little bit uh, colder, obviously maybe down to 20 degrees. We don't get that much snow, but what we do have up here, and I go back to those four seasons, is we have the waterways, we have the, obviously the, the beaches like Owens Beach you've seen on another video. We also have the mountains and we have this, well, we're called the Evergreen State, right? For a reason. We have, this is, I'm, I'm just doing a little walk trail, a little loop where I take my dog in the morning. So that's why obviously I'm just walking through here. Um, but we, we don't, we have the four seasons, we have the greenery. So we're called the evergreen state for a reason. Now, obviously I've got family that live down in Arizona. They were in Yuma and just recently moved to Phoenix. So obviously I, I drove the car down from, and I'll do that for clients. It's just arid, it's just barren. You get the old cactus here and there and it's just brown all the way through. And one of the very first things that, uh, that she does when she comes back up here, she'll get out and about, she'll go on one of these little trails, she'll go on one of these little hikes. And I'm not talking you have to climb up uh, Mount Rainier or something, you know what I mean? Because she misses the four seasons and she misses this greenery of what we have up here. We don't have the extreme colds like say in Chicago. We don't have that extreme heat like you do down in Arizona. So for me, weather-wise, it doesn't rain all the time. It drizzles quite frequently, I would say. But for example, you got, you know, I've, I've yet to see somebody with a brolly, with an umbrella up here, right? You know what I mean? Whereas, you know, you live in these cities where it does rain all the time, you gotta have a brolly, you gotta have an umbrella. So you, you, I just haven't seen that up here, which I was quite surprised. Because probably like you guys and everybody else, you always get that myth. Oh, Washington, Seattle, it always rains in Seattle, right? Nah, 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 nah. It doesn't. So weather-wise for me, I think is a plus, but again, it's just one of those things that some people might say, ooh, careful of that, because it rains all the time. Well, it doesn't, okay? Number four, let's talk about crime rates. So you know, just briefly on the crime rates. Crime rates, we're below the national average, which is kind of cool. Um, down, we, we have this, especially with Portland, and I correlate Seattle with Portland, especially over the past couple of years of what we've had. Um, and I'm not gonna get into politics or anything like that. That's not my job here. And I just, you know, I'm not gonna bring it up at all. But we had these, you know, people coming through and Antifa coming through and defund this and whatever, it is. whatever your political views are, I stay out of them and I don't get involved. But that created a lot of the, across the nation of what you saw, especially in Portland, and we had it up here in Seattle as well. So the crime rates that you might think are, you know, super duper high because of only what you see on the news. Turn the TV off once in a while and, you know, come up here, I'll pick you up from the airport, come and actually do a drive around of our state up here. Now, homelessness, it does correspond a little, correlate rather with say some of the crime rates out here. Downtown Seattle, you just, you do, it's very prevalent. It's very in your face. Um, the panhandles and stuff like that. 
Um, and obviously, whether you like it or not, crime rates are up there when that comes to town. Um, Puyallup, I always, you know, I love Puyallup. Okay, for me, it's so family friendly. Crime rates, super duper low. Tacoma, a little bit higher. Olympia, um, a little bit higher again. But all of us, like I said before, we're below the national crime rate. So for us, crime rates, they're kind of cool. They're not too bad. But as I said, some people might say, oh, crime rates up there. What do we see on crime rates? This is what we see on the news, etc., etc." So just bear that in mind, okay? So listen, briefly, don't forget, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Uh, let's get on this video FaceTime call. I can get to know you, Addy can get to know you. We'll dial in your needs and wants, and we'll get you set up on an auto email house search, all righty? Let's jump straight back into it. So, Number five is lack of diversity up here. And not a lot of people go into it, but I think it's prevalent you to mention this, and I'm gonna give you some stats um, about the lack of diversity. Um, some people think a lack of diversity is a great thing. Some think it's not, you know, it's not a great thing, whatever your opinion is. But the stats up here in Washington are 70% um, of Washington's population is white, 70%. 13.7 Hispanic, 11% Asian, African Americans are around 5.3%, Native Americans are around 3.1%, around and Pacific Islanders are around that 1.4%. So there's a lot of things that obviously if you're relocating job-wise or you're just making that transition you know, up here to Washington State, it's something to think about. It's something to maybe dive into with, you know, in greater detail, in further depth, like for example, um, niche.com. I always go back to niche.com. You can dial in, do a little bit more um, due diligence on your own end. And then any questions, obviously you can give me a shout and I can get them asked and answered with boots and ears on the ground, which I think is super duper important, especially when you're moving into and relocating across to Washington state, okay? So, Number six, or number seven, one of the two. So there's a, you hear it quite a bit up here. I'm one of these guys, I mean, I'll talk the hind legs off a donkey, I've no problem, you know, chatting to anybody. The wife absolutely either hates it or loves it sometime in a pub, because we'll go out for, we'll go out for a dinner and a drink, and I end up chatting to half the bar, you know what I mean? But that's just me, so. But some people say there's a lack of understanding from local residents as in maybe standoffish or a little bit aloof or something alrighty if you met me walking down the street you'd think exactly the opposite ready but they actually call it it's known as the seattle freeze right frosty the snowman so the seattle freeze have i i haven't seen it i've been up here uh nine years nine years now in this beautiful place but that you will find it on some of the videos and you will find it, this aloofness. Um, they say in Seattle especially. Puyallup, there's more of that downtown country feel about, so not as much. And like I said, you've seen, you know, the Mika days, you've seen the farmer's market, you've seen the Washington State Fair comes to ground. Like every, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry, every, you know, mother, daughter and Sasquatch gets out here. They're all out of the woods, do you know what I mean? So I don't really see it that much, but I know it is mentioned, um, and other people have mentioned it in either of their videos, or it will be, you know, you'll see it on somebody's, you know, sort of website or something like that. So a lack of understanding, AKA better known as the Seattle freeze. I disagree, but hey, that's just my humble opinion. So let's jump into the next one, which is a perceived lack of jobs in the higher paying sector. Alrighty, so we'll dive into that right now. What's happening guys? I've just moved down to Pioneer Park and you've seen that in some of my other videos. Because what they have here on Thursdays is just a little get together with kids. Um, everybody comes down, you know, they've got the Kiwanis uh, splash pool behind me over there. And on Thursdays down here in Puyallup, is the uh, concerts in the park. And I, I actually have a little chuckle saying this because I'm talking in this video 
is uh, is classed as why locals tell you you might not want to move to Washington State. But this is one of the reasons why I love Puyallup. There's always something going on for the family, and that's why, like I keep saying, Puyallup is such a hot market. So this really shouldn't be in this video because this is an absolutely awesome thing. And we've got the train going by right now, and we've got the band playing, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Now, what I say about lack of jobs, that uh, perceived lack of jobs, there's a lot of jobs in the in the sector, high paying jobs up there, okay? With the Microsoft technology and all that kind of stuff. But they're on the higher end kind of jobs, right? So there's a lot, a lot of competition for that. If you're getting out of college, uh, Microsoft, Google, etc., etc. So that number, the because of those jobs up here and the high competition, it does drive up those prices um, on the real estate front. Okay. And then I'll talk. That that'll be my last one talking about real estate. But that's one of the reasons why. Um, Although there's a lot of, you know, Deloitte, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Starbucks, like I've said before, there's a lot of jobs that maybe not in that high paying sector because of that competition that everybody's coming up here to get. Now on the eastern side of the state, um, job wise, um, a lot of the farms out there, um, I think we grow about 70% of the apples in the whole of the United States of America. Um, so there are jobs out there, just the higher echelon of jobs, um, you're gonna be fine. There's a lot of competition from there. Um, JBLM, um, if you're working down there, obviously um, not too shabby. A lot of people coming in from the army. So JBLM, you're kind of fine and you're good to go with, okay? One of the other things that obviously Seattle is, I wouldn't say notorious for, but we do have that perceived, like Portland to the south of us, is the homelessness, which has, which was probably been exacerbated over the previous, you know, three years uh, when the COVID kicked in and the Antifa stuff kicked in. Now I don't go into politics in any of my videos, okay? I don't do any of that. But the homelessness in Seattle is absolutely sometimes diabolical. Now we did an Olympia video as well, and when you see that, I talk about the homelessness in Olympia, and I think they've done a tremendous job and they cleaned it up, especially around uh, Capitol Lake, okay? And I was really, really surprised and shocked about how clean it now is. Three years ago, you were walking past the homeless camps and you had, and you had to walk around them um, in the downtown Olympia area. Now, I uh, this isn't anything against the homelessness, okay? They, I mean, they've fallen on the hard times, whatever it is. But again, one of the things when you talk about the homelessness is some of the money and the resources that obviously have to go into services like addiction services, mental health services, housing services, etc., etc. So those coffers have to be relocated to that problem, which might could be, or could could be better used in say education or other stuff like that. So again, personal choices. This isn't a go against the homelessness. I'm not attacking them. It's just a fact of life up here. Seattle is is really, really bad, especially down by that King Street station. Um, we were doing an Amtrak trick around uh, Am Trek, Amtrak? Amtrak trip around America. We went out of Seattle across Chicago and all the way around. That was a couple of years ago. And I remember we got dropped off up by King Street station. And it was, it was, you know, there's a lot, a lot of down there. So Seattle, oh, not very good. Olympia's tied itself up. Um, there's still quite a bit down there in Tacoma. Um, Puyallup, not at all. Um, a little bit down by the river, I've mentioned other videos. So it is, is 100% something, something to be definitely aware of. And again, I go back to ears and boots on the ground. Phil. I'm thinking about this area. Can you just dial in, maybe do a little tour of that neighborhood for us? You know, we'll do a FaceTime video call together. I'll say, hey, no, perfect, clear to go, no dramas. You're absolutely okay with the kids. So homelessness is one of the big things that is mentioned. Seattle, excuse me, still terrible. Olympia cleaned up. Puyallup, not a problem. Tacoma, kind of, I put that in the middle of the road. Uh, for the homelessness, okay? Now listen, don't forget, Phil Walsh, a licensed real estate broker with Skyline Properties Inc. and Homeowner Solutions. Give us a call 
the bells going off on the library over there there's music playing behind us behind me down here in pioneer park give us a call shoot us a text jump on this video or facetime call let's get a zoom call organized we want to dial in on your needs and wants so we can help you when you're relocating across here to either puyallup olympia tacoma seattle if you're going up north to everett and beyond if you're going south to chehalis or centralia um if you're going to the east like uh yelm Lacey, Tumwater, right by whatever it is, this is areas that I cover. So dial in, let's get in touch, and we'll sort that out, okay? So back to my last one, which is quite funny tongue in cheek, which some of the locals might say, good lord, real estate prices have gone through the roof in Washington State in the past five or ten years, and they wouldn't be wrong with that. I've mentioned in some of my other videos median home prices. The medium home price in Washington State, median with an N, median home prices in Washington State is about 668,000, okay? Now that's slightly less than Hawaii at 715,000, and it's slightly less with California, who's up there at 843,000, okay? But the median home price in Seattle a minute is around about a $775,000 mark. Tacoma, probably about that 450 to four, uh, 440 to 450 thousand dollar mark okay Puyallup 500 to that 530 thousand dollar mark um, Olympia again it varies and it's very weird if there's no homes on the market that price goes up 550 600 thousand dollars so our home prices and our real estate prices are up in that higher echelon okay um, it's again every i mean primarily one of the reasons jblm which is joint base lewis mccord is the huge military base which is bang central tacoma just to the north olympia to the south uh, puyallup to the east again seattle to the north so we've got that influx of folks coming in all the time on the jblm which is joint base lewis mccord and all the military coming in okay as i fall out of my shoe um the other thing is again we're going back to those job sectors so because there's always people are always coming in on the technology side of stuff like that people are always relocating for their jobs etc etc so the more people that are coming into this to the washington state this is why these house prices are remaining the same and if not going up so number one it's a good investment because your housing prices are merely going to go up and go down don't hold our feet to the fire as a real estate broker but our prices are kind of high, but don't let that scare you away because there are some great deals out there, but you just got to get in touch with us so we can dial you in. Don't forget, we'll set you up on an auto email search so you'll know exactly what homes are up here. And I've just had a client reach out to me, Robert. Phil, we're coming up for four days. Can you pick us up from SeaTac on the 16th of September? Drop us off at the Airbnb downtown here in Puyallup. Set us up on the auto email search. Send in the email, set it up for him and his partner, his wife. Um, initial 96 homes in the Puyallup on his price budget. And then now, every day moving forward, he's going to get a home as soon as it comes on the market, when it gets listed. So when he comes up, I think it's a Saturday he's flying in, I'm going to pick him up. On that Thursday to him, prior to coming in, I'm going to say, hey, here's a list of the homes currently available. Which ones do you want to go see and do a, do a tour around? He'll tell me A, B, C, D, E, however many it is. I set up the route, we bang, pick him up from the airport, drop off to the Airbnb on the Saturday evening. Sunday, knock out the route of those houses. So we got feet on the ground and we're not messing about plus obviously the watching these other videos i'm going to give him some recommendations to spend his best time for the four days that he's up here in puyallup so he gets to know the area he gets to know the vibe if this suits him and his family he can drive across to tacoma down to olympia up to seattle if that's what he and him and his family want to do so again that auto email search is an awesome tool that as real estate brokers can use to dial you in on exactly the homes and the market and how it's changing and fluctuating which has moved across to that more friendly buyer side opposed to a seller's market like i said over the past six to nine months which bodes well for you i'll say it again if the home is priced right in the right location it'll probably move we're looking at maybe now seven to two weeks as opposed to a year ago it was gone in sort of five to seven days so guys like i said before i really appreciate you watching our videos we love doing it um give us a call shoot us a text send us an email get on this video facetime call um, get in touch with us, that's all you gotta do. Um, dial it in so we can get to know your needs and wants. And like I said, these are just some of the reasons in my humble opinion as to why some locals might say, 
don't do move to Washington State. But I'll never say that because I'd love to work for you guys. So get on up here and let's get this organized. Guys, this is Phil Walsh, licensed real estate broker. Till next time, peace out.